my talk that you talk. Okay, it's the next weekend. Uh, we're going to start putting this uh, 454 together. Uh, the block's already been uh, pressure washed and cleaned and re-oiled and inspected and cleaned it up as best we could. Sorry, my voice still isn't the greatest, but we're getting there. Uh, we're just going to show you how to uh, properly install cam bearings, or at least our definition of uh, proper. We'll start with the front, and then we'll just keep working our way back. That way, uh, there'll be less chance to nick any of the uh, new cam bearings that we put in. Like I said we, uh, Derek in the past has made um, the dies to do all this, so the cam bearings will slide in proper with no uh, any problems. Also, too, when you're installing cam bearings, make sure you line them up with these little holes. That way you get that proper oiling and everything else. If not, bad things will happen very quickly. So anyway, I guess we'll start doing this. And we're using our homemade uh, cam bearing installation and puller. Which is basically just a, what is it, a three quarter inch threaded rod. Yep. And some aluminum uh, plugs. You can see the hole. And we're putting them in dry. I don't need a wrench. On this side, we just got a plug against the back of the block, and it's it's actually in the block, so the the uh, it centers the uh, rod. And there it goes. Hopefully never to come out again. Yeah, I don't know how far to go. I'm gonna pull it right there for right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's still about an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Yeah, we're just making sure we putting it in far enough because right now it just uh, the oil hole is not lining up, so we just gotta push it in another eighth of an inch. Put, put you right in the whole rod oh, cord. Sorry. Hey, I'm in. I can see light through. Yeah, I can see light through it. It goes on an angle. Okay. Yeah, because this one goes on a on an angle. Yeah, it's not totally straight. Yeah. Okay. So I saw light through it, so that one's in the uh, where it should be. And using aluminum blocks, it prevents it from gouging out the bearing too. 
So now number two. two. Okay, we're just doing number two now. How tight is it? Can you get it's a pretty, better? It's pretty tight. Can you get a better pull at it? Like short strokes are not the best. Yeah. Well, there you go. That got easy. Okay. It got easy. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Keep going? Yeah, keep going. And we did measure all the uh, cam bearings and wrote all the and measured all the journals. Figuring out which cam bearing goes where because the cam bearings are not labeled. Are we going in or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see it all. I'm too gone. right now. Want me to back it off? Yeah. Just got to see if it's in there. 100%. Good pull right up. Just a plug in there. I think it might have to go in a little bit more. We're dead 100%. Yeah, you can see the rod right there. Oh, the rod's going. Two is done. You know what we should make for another one? We should have different lengths of thread or rod. Well, that's what I thought about. <laughs> um, stick your camera. Just, just the way it's supposed to be. All right, we'll go. We're gonna well, do the. Not gonna work, right? Do the other three, and uh, we'll get back on the camera because I'm pretty sure after two, you're pretty bored right now. So we sh we showed you putting in the first two cam bearings. Uh, then we started to get in problems. Um, we were doing measurements and the first two cam bearings were in 2000 site, which is perfect. The second one was in four, it was going to be 4000 tight, and the fifth and the, or third and fourth were going to be 5000. Some of them, I think one of them was might close to 6000 too tight. And that's not including the 2000s that we, they should be. Um, so we ended up, um, well, we put, we put uh, the, four, the fourth one in, tried to put the cam in, and it wouldn't go in. It was too tight. It squished the bearing when it went in. So we pull, pulled it out. We had to get another set of bearings. The first, well, the first bearings, they were, I'm guessing they were just generic. I don't want to say the type, but... They didn't say where they good, went, so we had to measure them all. Uh, the second set of bearings we got was a lot better. They had uh, the position where they went into, so it made it a lot easier. But it, we still had the same problem. The These last three cylinders were, or cam journals were too small. Uh, this one was two thousands too small, five and five and a half to six thousands too small. Uh, so we determined that it, that was from the factory. Uh, they they didn't bore bore the uh, cam journals out uh, enough. 
These first two so first two cam journals, fine. They went in two thousand uh, tight, so that's good. But so what we had to do is we had to take. Uh, there was two options: either take it to a machine shop, which well we could have done it, but it was we don't have a line bore to do it here, or take it actually into a machine shop and get it done. So. Uh, we decided to go the route of the factory and we dressed down uh, the outside diameter of the last three cam bearings. So we took them on a, on our, uh, Derek hooked them up to our lathe and he gently sanded them down until they are going to go in two thousandths tight and we put them in and cam goes in fine. So it was just one of these blocks that it was made on a Friday or whatever, yeah, or someone was retiring that day. Uh, and they didn't bore it out correctly, the cam journals, and just one of those things. Very frustrating. Yes, very frustrating. Took us easily a whole day to do all that. So they're in now, and the cam goes in fine, the turns fine. Uh, so everything's, they're in their 2000s tight, so everything's a win so far. Just buy good bearings and if you're going to do this yourself, don't be afraid that you might, you might come across something like this and the factory uh, screwed up and you're going to have to modify it. So we were this close to taking it to an actual machine shop and getting them to do it. But we persevered and got it done. Dun, dun, dun. So anyway, I think on this video, what we're going to do is uh, uh, everything's ready to go. We'll put uh, new frost plugs in, uh, put all the little plugs in, in the back for the galleries, all the oil galleries and all that. Uh, the crank, I'm just finished cleaning right now. I got uh, It'll be good to go. Uh, pistons, everything are clean. Uh, we're going to put rings on the pistons, so you'll get to see that shortly. I hate that job. Uh, so that's why I'm going to get him to do it. And then yeah, we can start assembling and hopefully today we'll just have a short block and then that's probably where we'll leave this video if we don't have any other problems, hopefully. So, see you soon. We're uh, putting in frost plugs. Uh, we pulled all the uh, old ones out because uh, I like to do that anyway, put new ones in because I've had them rot out on me. Um, so what you do is you get a big socket just uh, so it doesn't wiggle. And then you uh, put some RTV silicone around it and you hammer them in. And just don't hammer them in too far because you can go all the way in. So just so they go underneath uh, the block. So we got this one all gooped up with silicone. And it will go in like when you're hammering it, you, it will go in crooked sometimes. So you just have to keep tapping it until it uh, goes in straight. I was say, do you want an extension on that? And obviously use a uh, uh, crappy uh, socket. Might need a actually a little bit smaller socket. Yeah, neck this, tight. Smaller. This one's too tight. <laughs> Don't need that anyways. Not needed in this. Yeah, that's a lot more. You know, you edit a bunch of this garbage. Yeah. That's not what I need. Oh, man. That's what you need. All right. Now with a smaller socket. I would say that's good enough. Good job. Perfect. Yeah. 
wipe off the excess. And you're good. Here, I got another one. Here it comes. A little bit more on the top. There. Number two. And all the frost plugs shoot well on this one they're all the same size. And yes, they are all, are all the same EPC 82, all the same. Frost plugs, not that anybody cares. When I bought these, I had the chance of buying brass ones, but uh, it's not worth buying the fancier ones for this. These ones would be just fine. Roger, can you get to the backside with the thing on the stand? One of them. And there is two mm. frost plugs in the back. We can even get those at another time when we do the back of the cam. Yeah. So, unless you want to take it off the stand. More. More importantly. Yep. On a serious note, where's the lid for the... The coop. Oh, on the floor know. somewhere. Yeah. No, oh, it's there. Thank God. Yeah, it's right. There. Yeah, that one's good. There. Like I said, there's one more there and there and in the can there, but uh, we'll do it when it's off the stand. It's hard to do it when it's on the stand. I'd rather do it properly, so. Yeah. All right, I'll uh, finish cleaning up the crankshaft and uh, if you guys want to start uh, oiling everything up for the bearings. All right, well, Corey's uh, cleaning the uh, crank again with brake clean, just to make sure everything is good. Uh, Derek's here is cleaning the, the bottom, the, the saddles with the brake clean. You want all any dirt and that removed from that. Then we'll uh, clean those up again. They've already been uh, cleaned once, but they've been sitting for a few days, so just give them a quick wipe. Make sure so they seat seat nice. In the real world, the crank probably should have been polished. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, everything should be as clean as possible when putting an engine together. So now, we're, uh, you know, Derek will just clean out the, the bearing surface on those and the mating surface of the main caps. And we've got the uh, crank gear on already, as you saw. And we'll just uh, get the get the bearings and we'll put that in. Okay, uh, we're getting ready to put the crank in and everything else. Um, just want to take your time, make sure everything's clean. Like I said, I can't stress it enough. Everything should be cleaned properly before you put it in, because any bit of junk will just go through the motor and f it all up and it's happened before in the past when we were younger but uh when you're doing this kind of thing always try to buy a good brand name of parts these are all cleavite bearings i'm not sure where the box on i think it's over there but cleavite mounting and all that good stuff and i know sometimes you, you all you can get is the cheaper brand stuff the like first cam, set of cam, cam bearings, bearings were not yeah they weren't good but mm -hmm. anyway that's neither here nor there but like i said we've got a good camshaft and uh, uh comp uh, lifters and all that stuff and but uh, I'd like to give a special thanks and a shout out to uh, Auto Parts Center. Boots helped us out. And uh, Adam, thank you very much for all your help, you guys. Go see them if you guys are local. They've been around forever. We've been dealing with them forever. So they're really on, great guys. They're on Notre Dame. Yep. Super nice guys. Right across from McDonald's and Burger King. Well, uh, McDonald's. Actually, no, McDonald's isn't bad. Every <laughs> once in a while. Don't shake your head. But uh, when you uh, put your bearings in, just make sure, like I said, everything's clean. I took the time this morning. I wasn't going to film any of this stuff, just cleaning up the block and everything else. I know it still needs the, it still needs a little bit, but... Uh, and these should be... Dry. Dry. I never put uh, bearings in with oil behind them. And you'll notice when you put them in, there's always a tang on opposite opposite sides. Or well, for the mains, there'll be a, a tang on this side. So it's really easy not to screw it up, but... Uh, and then obviously then we'll put oil in here when we drop the crank and just see how it uh, rotates. And basically when we did pull this block apart, the bottom end was actually really nice shape and even the bearings, there was really nothing wrong with them, but I said the culprit was uh, faulty bad lifters. I said you just want to make sure everything's nice and flush. Here's the rear main, and yes, it's a two piece, not a one piece. Just like that. Alrighty, back in a minute. Okay, we're just gonna throw the, uh, the crank gear onto this uh, 454 crank here. The timing set we got is uh, a closed nine way one. You have three different marks to advance or retard in different keys. Since this is a stock engine, we're just going to go straight up on the on the rec, just a rectangular key. Like I said, if there's a performance we're really worried, we go the other way and actually degree it. This being a stock engine, we're not going to. But uh, I just like to put a light film of oil on it. Put it down. Put a spacer on it. And then we'll put our... Uh, Put our camshaft, uh, not camshaft, our harmonic balancer tool on here. Just that we'll use uh, a little bit of hydraulic force to press it down. And just down, down, yeah. We'll try that washer. Might not be big enough. We'll see. Usually these things aren't that tight. It pulled off relatively easy. So we're gonna tap through that this morning, so it threads on good. It would be better to have this in some sort of place or something. Oh, Throw in a whole there, but yeah, maybe. Why are you doing that? Because we gotta put a new gear on it. There you go. There you go. That makes it easier. Oh, 
also just a note on these gears. They do have a big radius or chamfer in the bottom to clear the radius on the front of the crank snout, so make sure you put them on the right way. How are you knowing about that? You'll, oh, you'll feel it. Got it? Yeah, I got it. We're just about there. We've got about another eighth of an inch to go. Mm -hmm. Behind the scenes, yeah. Behind the scenes. Not really behind the scenes, it's kind of boring. It's just boring case. There we go. And back her off. And thank you, Tim, for yet again letting us Yeah, we, we, we have the tool here, but we're missing the thrust bearing, so we had to go borrow from the neighbor here. What today. is a fire right there? Well, also, we could have done it anywhere because it's pretty warm here, but it's still. She's toasty. And there you go. Hey, right, I'll go finish. Cleaning this guy off. Oh, oh. Is that a special washer for it? Yeah, just the washer was on your pants. No cream soda today. Oh, I forgot about your cream soda. Budget, budget cutbacks. Okay, we'll go clean this up then. He has a lot of used car salesmen around. This guy. Yeah. All right, let's go to work. Back in a minute. Okay, we just installed the rear the rear seal. We like to put a little bit of RTV silicone underneath the seal just to give it a little extra. And then once we're finally put the crank in, we'll put a little dab there and there on the edges. And we're uh, just pre-lubing the, uh, the bearing surfaces with some good oil. And that's the oil we'll be using to break the motor in anyway, so. I looked around here, I might even have assembly oil for it, but all right, that'll be fine. Okay, time for crank. You want to be very careful. When you do this. Oh, I didn't think it was actually going to go that good. I guess I ate my Wheaties this morning. Okay. Break open the nose. And uh, we've got the other half of the rear main seal in the... In the rear cap, we'll just put the bearings on, oil those on, and we oil the bolts as well when they go in to give a good uh, torque rating. Okay, okay just lubing up the, uh, the caps. And again, the same thing, they have little tabs on them. Mm -hmm. And they're numbered. And they're numbered, yeah, exactly. Number one, and it's got a little arrow, so always face forward. And when you do, you just want to spray a bit of oil on your threads. And we'll tighten these down, but I'll just put them all in first and then I'll tighten them down and then we'll torque them to spec and the sequence. Like I said, when doing this, never enough oil, especially when you first start off a dry motor. 
bad things can happen very, very fast. Number two. It's kind of exciting, but it's kind of not. I'm sure there's probably professional engine builders out there everywhere just shaking their heads right now. Or they might be saying, hey, these guys are all right. Oh, by the way, hi Rick, hope you're watching. I think Casey here saying 454 power. And over there's the cam and uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. I think I shot your boot. Now you're gonna have to clean the floor. Yeah. Usually do. You guys don't clean up in here to make a holy mess and then. The maid will clean it up. Mm -hmm. I'm a maid. That's okay. And there is a difference between the the top cap of the rear main and the bottom. The bottom has an oil hole. The top does not. At least on this engine and these bearings. Yeah. At least it feels like we're actually getting something accomplished today and it's not just another weekend of cam bearings. <laughs> I got a check of cam bearings. Oil up the seal, good. Perfect. And we put a little dab of silicone there as well. be doing after they put these bolts in eh? clean up the floor and we don't get oil everywhere and, and I don't slip and yeah, break a, a hip mm, your age here on borrowed time <laughs> I knew he was gonna say that my new stock is you were smashing well it's only frost plugs you gotta give the audience what they want can't use old rusty old sockets and you didn't think I would know Okay, we'll be back in a minute. I gotta go find uh, some sockets here and yeah, find the, the impact wrench. or the torque wrench. Yeah. yeah, no impact. Well, you can use an impact just to chase them down, but yeah. All right, we'll be back. I'll go grab it. Okay. I'll tighten down. Yeah, uh, 454. Or he's just searching the internet for the torque specs. We'll insert some elevator music right now. All right. Four volt main apparently is 110. Good thing we don't have a four volt. I got 150, oh, 60. Main caps, I have a two volt, 95. So I do, so uh, I do in a couple, or, yeah, 50 or whatever. And, okay. Then we start with the center cap. We're going 50 or 60. And work your way out from there. 
and hopefully it spins. Actually, we'll check to see if it spins when we uh, do the first time. I guess I could have brought the balancer on here. Or I just grabbed the bolt. Mm -hmm. Wherever the book put it. Ah, right here. Okay, all down 60 and it spins. Oh, it spins? Okay. Spins nice. Okay. Ooh, we can find them. 'Cause we know that GM didn't uh, screw up on <coughs> line boring the uh, crank journals like they did the cam bearings. Gotta jinx it. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why I hate GMs. That AMC had have the same problems. Anybody. Doesn't matter. First engine I rebuilt was an AMC and it went better together than this. Tomato, tomato. Nice and smooth. No binding. What I like to see. Okay, I guess ugh, the shitty part now. Okay, uh, we uh, just took the engine off the stand there so we could hit the, the back of the crankshaft with a block of wood in the front there just so we can see if it seats itself. Uh, just so we can see what the thrust is. And then uh, we just hooked up a, a dial indicator. And I think we're almost at 5,000. And I think that's well within spec. So. It's all within spec. Yep. Okay, here is one of the, uh, the cam bearings that actually we bought for this block, actually found on the ground when I was cleaning it up. Um, this one, I do believe it was like 7,000, 8,000 is too large. Um, it was when we measured it, it was like way out to lunch. Uh, Derek was smart enough. At least he's the one that kind of knows how to use this shit, but he was able to use an inside mic. And then we're at, like for the, the crank there and we're able to measure all this stuff. I don't know all the terminologies about half the stuff. I can kind of wing it, but. Outside mic. Yep. That's a telescopic. This is an inside mic. It's at a convert, big convert. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, we were able to, I just found this one, so I thought I'd share, but yeah, it was like, this one was like 8,000 too large and, uh, it actually was a good bearing until uh, Derek put in the lathe and I guess we found out that we heated it up too much while he was doing it. So it melted the, uh, lead inside. So yeah, it's all garbage. So, but we had an extra one. I'll just throw it there. It counts. But anyway, I just figured we'd tell you about that and some of the tools that we use. It's comical. That's what people want. So yeah, just, just sorry to interrupt here with you guys, the assembly process here. We're talking about Casey here. I'm trying to explain to him he's too young to be around for VHS compared to today. I how crummy the VHS. Well, you know what it is, but how crummy the quality is compared to newer stuff. I've seen Mario 64 clips on VHS. Yeah, the, it, compared to the new stuff. It's, it's fuzzy. Exactly, because it's VHS compared Why to... Why do you want anything to do with the VHS? Because right? to film for the Nintendo onto the VHS. I want to try and get my speed runs on YouTube. What the heck are you talking about? And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, <laughs> good plug by the way, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Five thousand six seven six, capital P and capital D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. That's pretty funny. Two off. All right, just putting some uh, piston rings on. You need a haircut. <laughs> so I'm just using a ring expander. Oh, but go find me an 11 sixteenths uh, wrench. Okay. That's shitty. You want to just need a junky one? Yep. Perfect. There we go. 
oil rings already on that one. Six to go. <sighs> All right, just putting the the rings on the pistons. That's the oil ring. not exactly exciting so uh, I don't blame you if you want to go to the fridge and grab something to eat or whatever because it's pretty boring doing rings that's my two cents just don't go to Popeye's and get some chicken yeah lately it's been that takes too long oh yeah I thought you were going to say Taco Bell unless it's across the street from where you live and yeah, no Taco Bell for a while well, this is the bottom oil uh Rings and spacers. Now, ring number two. This ring has a dot. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. A dot so it's going in a chamfer so the dot always faces up the instructions weren't the greatest no the instructions tell you how to put the oil ring on and the oil ring spacers and then, then that's it luckily we've done this once or twice before yeah I could say that <laughs> wasn't it say uh, those are the wrenches or yeah the thin wrenches okay there's 11, 16, and 17 mils. So I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, because I was wondering, I was like, well, we've got to have a shittier uh, wrench than that. Perfect. And then you just oh, yeah. stagger your rings and... And oil them up before everything goes in. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're just getting ready. We're checking the uh, ring gap. These are sealed, sealed power rings they're already set for a, a standard ring gap they're not uh filed to fit or anything like that so we're just going to check check them just to make sure and this is you basically put it in and grab a piston just to and that basically centers centers it so it's not crooked in the bore and you take a feeler gauge in the gap and find out what the and with this we figured it about 18 thousandths would be good yeah, so we're four thousand per inch yeah and to a four and a quarter so we're yeah. there's about 18 thousand yeah. yeah and right now we're running at a, i'll say 20 gap, so. so that's good good plenty of room for nitrous I'm joking. Okay, so uh, I think we're gonna call it a wrap today for at least this video. Um, we got all the piston rings done, everything fits good and everything else. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, cranks in and everything else, cam bearings. So I think next video, I'm just going to, uh, I'll just give it a final cleaning and everything else. And uh, then we'll start installing the pistons. Uh, we'll put the camshaft in, timing chain. We'll bottom up, uh, button up the bottom end. And then, uh, then the next video after that, I guess we'll start doing the cylinder heads. Yeah, but anyway, I hope you like this little video. Maybe learn something. Like I said, we're not professionals by any means. We think we are, but we're not. But uh, like I said, it took a lot longer than uh, we anticipated with these stupid cam bearings. And uh, so yeah, I hope you like this little video. And the next one, uh, like I said, we'll put all the pistons in and show you a few things and the camshaft and how all that stuff and whatnot. And uh, so anyway, I hope you like this little video. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Have a good one, guys.